having trouble. So we are going to try and get everything on here the brightest possible. Shutter speed, you're gonna try and leave it open as bright as possible, as long as possible, but you might start getting star trails. So you don't wanna leave it open too far or you get star trails. Um, the aperture, you wanna open it as bright as possible, as big as, so let in as much light as possible. So you are going to dial that down to the, the most your lens can let in. Do note again, so star trails is the problem with shutter speed. Um, aperture, your images might not be as crisp at that far end. In ISO, you're gonna crank it up as high as possible, but you don't want your picture to look like a sandstorm or a blizzard in the end. So the, you have to figure out where do you put those, all right? If you're shooting a waterfall in the middle of the day and you don't have a filter, you want everything on the, the, the other side, all right? Um, except for your shutter speed. Gosh, this gets confusing because you want your shutter speed open to get that smooth effect. But that lets in more light, so you have to close down everything. You want your lowest ISO, you want your smallest aperture, um, and that might work, all right? For shooting a cheetah running through, you want to let in lots of light, but it has to be really quick. So it's going to be shutter speed fast, and these things are going to be really high, okay? So it's playing with these factors, trying to figure that out. Questions about that? So when you did that Milky Way shot, you had a 1.4 lens, but you shot it at 2.8. So were you trying to get the crisper sky when you did that? <laughs> I, I was... Like, was that a compromise is what I'm asking? I am trying to think. Typically when I'm shooting the Milky Way, I try and open it up as far as possible. I think I actually was using a lens that was only 2.8. I think I was using this lens here that it was the most open. And did you shoot that cheetah shot? I definitely did. Oh, right. Yeah. No, all the photos that you see here, except of, of the equipment, are all going to be my own photos. Oh, that's so, cool. yeah, if, if it shows a picture of a camera, I probably didn't take it. That but if, awesome. it, if it shows the picture of... Oh, of Yeah, so that was in Tanzania um, in March. You got the zebra there too. How close yeah. were you to that shooter? Um, maybe 50 meters. It took down a wildebeest right in front of me. So, yeah. Did you get that? Oh, I mean, I took, I took about 50 photos in, in succession. Um, the nice thing is, is that I actually, it was rated G because it, when it took the wildebeest down, it went underneath the, the grass. The grass was long at that area. So I didn't even, it just all of a sudden, oh, they both like go down. Right, right. and then like two minutes later, the cheetah gets up and has like blood dripping. <laughs> 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 so yeah, all of these photos I, I took myself. Um, some of them are better than others. All right, so let's go on to hardware. So digital SLR refers to a digital single lens reflex. So light comes through, it bounces off a mirror and is directed at the viewfinder. When you take a shot, the mirror flops up, um, allowing the light to hit the sensor, all right? Um, we'll go on to the mirrorless ones because the, these are coming up in popularity. And in fact, these are also what you think of as your cell phone or your point and shoot. They're not, they don't have that mirror reflex. The light is coming through, hitting the sensor, and you're seeing it, it's then digitally projected either on a viewfinder or like on the back of the screen, you hold it out in front of you. Um, this technology is rapidly increasing. They're already, um, Nikon and Canon both sell one. Canon's first one came out maybe a year or two ago. It's called the Canon M. Um, you can actually attach these big lenses onto it. Um, you need a little adapter, but um, it did not, people didn't really like it because it was really slow on autofocus. However, it, it was Canon's first uh, uh, foray attempt into that they probably are coming out with another one this fall, um, this autumn. So it, it still is a very good quality camera. It's not quite as good as these ones, but at the same time, um, they're making them better and better, and it's very possible that they will someday get rid of the digital SLR and just have, have these, get rid of that mechanism. Um, and Canon has the J. Okay, I just wanted you guys to be aware of your, your live view, and that is basically trying to to mimic this, it's not fully there yet, all right? 
the big push in why they did live view is to be able to do videos. Um, and then all of a sudden they said, you know what, this works well for trying to focus and do a, a whole bunch of other things. These cameras use that technology. You notice the focusing unless you push the shutter down halfway, which um, blocks the image. Um, <laughs> It, this, this is what is using that same technology. So it is up and coming. All right, let's talk about sensor size. Sensor size is, is fascinating here. Um, we'll, we'll go back to live view soon enough. Um, all right, full frame cameras, there's two kinds of cameras, full frame and cropped. Full frame referred to 36 by 24 millimeters, equivalent to when you had um, the old analog, the film cameras, that was 35 millimeter um, film. So a full frame camera will take that, that full shot. Crop sensors no noted as APS-C or DX from Nikon um, are about 1.6 factors um, smaller. You can even just see this, this 7D, Canon 7D, is a crop sensor. Just look at how big that sensor looks. I mean, th these are about in proportion there. The sensor is quite a bit smaller. With the same focal length, if we took the same lens and put it on, yours is a crop sensor. Those, yeah, those two are crop sensors. The 60DA is the six, well, actually I have a whole list here. Full frame includes the 1DX, the 5D Mark III, the 5D Mark II, the 6D. So, uh, Francis and Julian's camera, I listed the Nikon. The cropped ones are including the 7D, the 60DA, um, the T5, the T4, those ones as right. well. So those are cropped. All right. And I'm not saying one is better than the other, but I will tell you exactly kind of why. With the same focal length, so if you stuck a 24 millimeter lens on it, we took the same one, we put it on your camera versus we put it on your camera you will get two different shots. Um, this one will be a lot closer in because it's cropped. It has lost all the data around the sides. It is a cropped sensor, all right? The light still comes in, but it just doesn't gather anywhere. It's, it's lost. On the full frame, it does pick up everything there, all right? Crop sensors are easier to produce, thus they're cheaper, all right? The, I was even reading about the wafer size of these, just like on a microchip. Sometimes the same like Intel processor, they, they will clock at different speeds because of how perfected it comes through. Same on these is that it's much easier to produce a smaller size um, sensor. The quality is higher. Currently you need to pay about $2,000 or more to get um, a, a full frame sensor. Um, the 60 is kind of Canon's most affordable full frame sensor uh, camera. And some lenses are made specifically to work with cropped sensors. Um, so if you buy a lens, it's very possible, unless you're buying a, a higher end lens, it's possible that that will not transfer if you upgrade your camera to a full frame camera. The main thing about cropped versus <coughs> full frame is that the sensors in the, the full frame ones typically are Canon's highest end sensors. Um, they could put them in the lower end ones too, but they kind of reserve that for the high end ones. Um, and so in a way you're not, the money isn't going towards um, whether it's full frame or, or partial frame, it's going towards is your sensor the, the newest technology that uh, the company has kind of got off the line or is it not? So typically the full frame ones at this current time will pick up light better, will be like ISO, will be um, able to shoot higher just because, not because of the size of it, but because of the actual quality of it itself. But do note if you buy, um, if you upgrade your, your camera, some of your lenses might not work if you um, have a cropped one. All right, and listed those. Anything, any questions about the full frame versus the crop? They would technically work, they're just gonna end up with a black border. Correct, and it's not an exact black border. Right. In fact, it kind of looks like an old TV. It's kind of an oval, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a very, everyone says, wait, what's going on there? Mm -hmm. All right, megapixels, why do we care? Um, if, you get, if you have an eight megapixel camera or greater, you can put it up on a billboard, all right? 
So don't be too worried about the megapixels, but just like I was saying with the crop sensor versus the full frame sensor, typically the 